Hi everyone and welcome back to Lunchtime Live at the Wild Center. My name is Chelsea and I'm a member of the Animal Care staff here in Tupper Lake, New York. And today you guys are going to get to have a very special view of me giving some of the animals I care for a very special treat. So I know you guys love my face, but I figure you probably want to see which animals you're going to get a look at. So I'm going to turn the camera around for you guys. So right now, you guys are getting a lost our stream for just a second. Let me just adjust the camera. So you guys are getting a one of a kind view into our otter play yard. And you can see our otters are very excited and curious to see what's going on today. So I am going to give our otters a very special treat and you guys are going to get to watch the whole thing. Now, what I'm giving them is a snowball fight. So I've got this bowl of snowballs here, but they're not just your everyday snowballs. In that bowl, that bowl of snowballs, we have some ground meat. You can see a little bit of there. And then each snowball also has a bunch of fish in it. So the otters are very patiently awaiting. So I am going to toss in those snowballs for them. And you guys are gonna get, again, a really cool look at this. And then once these guys are having fun chowing down, I'll talk a little bit about the otters that are here at the Wild Center, how they came to be, and how we take such good care of them. So, we are going to start. So, one of the questions I get asked most often when people see me working with the otters or learn that I work with otters is, do you go in and pet them? What you guys are seeing now is just otter corrective behavior. If you guys have ever seen dogs play together, they will often nip each other and make some noise. That's totally okay. And that's appropriate for these guys, but they have really thick fur. It keeps them warm in the winter and their fur protects them when they're giving each other kind of those gentle bites to correct behaviors that the other otters don't want. But humans are relatively naked in comparison. So we don't really go in with our otters very often. Um, most of the otters we don't go in with at all. Just because humans are relatively naked, you can see uh, Dawine over there, his fur, how thick it is. I'm gonna put my arm, look how naked I am in comparison. So that fur acts like a suit of armor for these guys. And humans, we're just not built to withstand those teeth that they have. And I see that Jane's asking, is that them squealing? Absolutely. So again, that's just otter talk and a lot of the squealing that you're hearing is coming from Scarlet, who is our female otter in with this group. Now Scarlet has a big mouth and she's a little bit like the boss of the group. She tells the boys what for and anytime there's food involved, she usually is the one telling the boys that she wants to get kind of the prime choice of food. So we don't often feed them all together. Usually only their lunch gets fed with all of them but their breakfast and dinner these guys do get separated out that way we can make sure everybody has enough food every day for their lunch meal it's not a big enough meal that we worry about someone getting you know too many pieces of fish or too few but we do manage to make sure that nobody you know goes hungry for sure all of our otters are in really good condition if any of them were say a little too chubby or if they were a little too thin a little too lean we would actually separate them out for the lunch feeding as well, just to make sure they were getting the appropriate amount of food. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down again. So that was all of the snowballs I had. You guys saw how quick it went. Uh, I always like to say that otters are like teenage boys. <laughs> they sleep 16 hours a day. They will devour anything that you put in front of them and they never ever do what you ask the first time that you ask them. So speaking of teenage boys, the otter that you guys are seeing right now, that is Louie. He is our second oldest otter that lives here at the Wild Center. He is 18 years old. He'll be turning 19 this spring. And an otter's natural lifespan, if he were in the wild, is only about eight to 12 years old. So Louie has far surpassed the typical life expectancy of an otter. Now above him, that otter hopping down off the log is Scarlet. She's the loudmouth, the only girl in this group, like I mentioned. She's four years old and will be turning five this spring. Now, hanging out in front as well, 
chewing on some food. That is Dawine. He is a three-year-old male, and he is joined by his companion way back over there, Los Nole, who's also a three-year-old male. Now, all of the otters that came he that live here at the Wild Center came to us in a variety of different ways. So, Los Nole and Dawine, those guys actually came to us from Louisiana. They were born in the wild, but they became nuisance animals. So, if you guys live in New York, where Tupper Lake is located and the Wild Center is, then you probably know that deer are often considered nuisance animals on farms because they'll go in and they'll eat farmers' crops. Now, these two guys, they're conveniently in the frame together right now, Los Nole and Dawine, they weren't eating, you know, veggies or fruit. Instead, they found their way into a crayfish farm in Louisiana and were eating all of the food. Now, Normally otters in that situation will actually be euthanized because they're, you know, doing a lot of damage to human crops and it's not safe to relocate them. But these two otters were actually live trapped and then sent to us to give them a long home. Hopefully they'll live as long as Louie can and they'll be really, really happy here. They've been with us for a couple of years now. The other two otters that we have out here today, so Louie in the back snuggling in on that hammock and then Scarlet they came to us after being abandoned by their mothers in the wild so we're not exactly sure what happened we just know that they were found on their own and they were way too young to survive otters generally stay with their mom for about a year so for these guys to have been abandoned when they were only a month or two old really means that they didn't have a great chance of making it on their own but because they were raised by people they kind of lost that fight or flight instinct that's really crucial to a lot of animals to make it in, on their own and so they just wouldn't do very well if they are out there all by themselves. But, like I said, Louis has lived far past what he would have in the wild, so it's not all bad news. And you can tell we do lots of cool things like giving the otters snowballs to make sure that they have a really, really good life here. Now, I do want to just remind you guys that this is actually a live stream. So if you have any questions, I can see a lot of you guys are tagging people, bringing them to this stream. Thank you for that. But if you have any questions that you want answered live, feel free to post them in the comments. I will do my best to keep up and answer them live. And if there's anything I don't get to, I will come back later and type out the answer. Now, where you guys are right now, I'm going to try to pan the camera around, is in our otter play yard area. So this is one of three spaces that our otters have available to them throughout their time here at the Wild Center. This is their outdoor space. Now, it is really fun because, like you guys can see, it's open to the element. So right now, there is a lot of snow here in their outdoor play yard, and the otters are loving it. You can tell they're slipping and sliding. It's a lot of fun for them. But just a couple of months ago, it was full of wildflowers. You can see some old dried stems and stalks that are still in this pen. So it was about hip high with wild plants. So it's a lot of fun for the otters in this space because it's ever changing and it changes with the seasons, which is a very, very natural thing for these guys to experience. The other area is just behind it. You can see that roof over there that has a little bit of snow. That is our otter bedroom area. And so each otter has their own bedroom and actually has a heated floor. So radiant floor heating, which is pretty nice for these guys. It's completely encased from the elements during the winter. So it's a little bit toastier. And we do open that up in the summer so that they get, you know, a breeze. And so that it's really nice for them down there. And they have each a big igloo like the one you guys are seeing now. They have climbing elements and they have water tubs down there. So it's a lot of fun for them down there. Right now, these guys actually have access to the play yard and downstairs in the bedrooms. And they are choosing to be out here, which is awesome because the play yard is actually one of the areas that is open to the public when the Wild Center is open on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So if you come to the Wild Center on the weekends, you actually can see the otters in this space, which is pretty cool. Now the other space, the third space that our otters have access to is our indoor otter falls pool. And that's about 8,000 gallons. And we do have one otter in there today. Her name is Squirt. She's actually a 19 year old female otter. And Squirt 
doesn't get along with our other otters. She's told us many, many times that she doesn't want to be with them, and that's totally okay. We're never going to force her to spend time with the other otters. So she kind of gets like the penthouse suite all to herself, which is pretty nice. And we switch it out. So tomorrow, these guys will actually have access to that big indoor pool, and Squirt will be out here. So every day is a little bit different for them. And it's not a bad gig at all. Louis looking up, hoping I have some more food to drop down. And I can see that Debbie is asking, do they live along rivers in any communities? You know, that is a really, really good question, Debbie. So this type of otter, they're called North American river otters. So they do live in rivers. And as long as the rivers in your community are actually uh, clean, you know, they don't have a ton of pollution and they have a healthy fish population, there could be otters there. It can be kind of tricky to find them because they can be nomadic in nature. They don't tend to stick in the same area for too long unless there's a really, really good food source. But here in Tupper Lake, we do actually have some otters that live in the Racket River, which kind of runs through town and just on the outside of it. So they definitely can be seen in communities as long as you have those clean waters and lots and lots of fish. Great question. And they can even be found in some bigger cities. Again, as long as the water is really clean. But you guys can see right now, Louis kind of leaned up against a log. He blends in really, really well. So in addition to being, you know, nomadic and maybe hard to find the location of an otter, they also have pretty good camouflage. So unless you see them really against something that they're going to stand out against, then it might be hard to actually spot these guys. I've seen most otters that I've seen in the wild in the winter because their brown fur sticks out just like you guys are seeing against the snow. And I see that Livy and Matt have a couple of questions. The first one is, what is the lifespan of otters when humans are taking care of them? And that's an excellent question because you guys heard me say that Louie, who's right here still just hoping for more food, and Squirt, who's inside, are 18 and 19 years old. Typically, otters that are getting proper care from people, so people who, you know, kind of specialize in otters like we do here at the Wild Center, they typically will live to be about 15, give or take a couple of years. So that's still several years longer, maybe even, you know, 50% longer than a wild otter. But every so often you get otters that live far past that, like Louie and Squirt. And the oldest otter that we know of, the North American River otter, that people were taking care of, was actually 22 years old when it passed away. So Louie and Squirt are both getting up there in age, but they're doing pretty well, and we're hopeful that they'll be with us for a while yet. And that just shows, you know, they have really, really good care. So they have a lot of things to do and to play with, lots of things to keep them occupied, and they have really, really excellent food that we give them. We actually give our otters fish that comes from the same truck that delivers fish to the restaurants here in Tupper Lake, which is pretty awesome. They get restaurant quality, human grade food. And they have excellent health care. So if anything were to go wrong, we have a vet who will make sure that these guys get every uh, bit of care in the world to make sure that they are healthy and happy. So otters are a lot like two year olds. And so they had their lunch. Now they're going around and they're starting to get a little bit sleepy now that their bellies are full. You can tell they're starting to slow down. So it might be a little more challenging for me to get good shots of them but I will do my best to keep the camera focused on otters and forgive me if it's a little too wobbly. Now, I see that your son, Libby, Matt, wanted to know how these guys survive in the winter because you can tell it is really snowy here. We have a couple of inches of snow. It's actually a warm day in December uh, in Tupper Lake. It's about 30 degrees right now and the otters don't mind it at all. Me, on the other hand, my fingers that are holding the phone, the camera, they're actually a little frozen right now. You know, I'm a little uncomfortable and that's okay because humans aren't designed to be out in the cold. But otters are perfectly designed to live in this kind of weather. So as I mentioned, and we're going to zoom in because the three younger otters are playing, which is pretty adorable. Um, as I mentioned, these guys have some pretty thick Fur, and that fur is their number one adaptation for protecting them in the winter. 
So they have actually dual layered fur. And you guys might know some dogs that have really, really thick fur. They have two layers. And so the undercoat is really, really fluffy. If you've ever had a puffy jacket that maybe even was down, that's just like an otter's under layer of fur. And so how that works is the otters, when they're cleaning themselves like these guys are doing now, they're actually putting air in between those pieces of fur and that air will get warmed by their body heat and it traps that heat right close to their body. And then their outer layer of fur, that second layer, is really, really thick and it actually is waterproof. So these guys have a really warm layer underneath to keep them nice and toasty and then they actually have a really, really glossy layer on the outside that they groom oil in to make sure that they don't get wet. So they can stay really, really toasty and that is their best adaptation for the surviving the winter. Otters actually don't hibernate. Even when it's really, really cold, as I mentioned, it's 30 degrees here today, but in January, there'll probably be a couple of days. We're gonna see if we can see Louie. He just went into the igloo and sometimes he uh, pokes his head out, but maybe not. He might not want his nap time to be featured on camera. Uh, so these guys, they, uh, well, actually, when it's really, really cold here in Tupper Lake, it actually gets to be 40 degrees below zero. And the otters will swim in that. Wild otters will actually go out, find holes in the ice. Of course, as soon as I pulled the camera away, Louie poked his head out. You just saw him leaving that igloo. He might come on over to say hi. So even when it's negative 40 degrees, otters are finding holes in the water and going swimming to look for fish, which I see that we had a question from Emma. Yeah, so fish are the main portion of an otter's diet. These guys saw me moving and I think they hope that there's even more food coming. They're like bottomless pits, I'm telling you. So otters in the wild, the majority of their diet is fish-based, though they'll eat things like crustaceans, um, so like crayfish if they could catch them. They might eat clams or mussels if they can find them. And even other animals, if they can find them, if they found, you know, a mouse that they could catch, a frog or baby birds, these guys would try to eat it. So they're not super picky, but they're specifically designed to go after and eat fish. So that's what all of their adaptations are. So these guys are uh, maybe getting a little playful, gonna turn the camera. Lo Snole was just trying to go under that big tub and uh, scared Dawine a little bit. So most of the time, they're gonna eat fish, though if something else happens in their path, they won't uh, hesitate to try to make a meal of that as well. That was an excellent question, Matt. So Muriel is asking, the little one following the bigger one, are they related? So all of our otters are actually not related, which is a little bit unusual. These guys all came from the wild, uh, two of these otters so Louie who is on camera now and Scarlett who is just in the back just poked her head up right there so those two were actually orphaned by their mothers in two separate areas Louie came to us from Minnesota and Scarlett came to us from South Carolina and then Lo Snole who just poked his head up in Dawine who you can just see over the edge those two were actually uh in Louisiana. They're unrelated, but they have the same story where they made their way onto a crayfish farm and they became nuisance otters where they were actually eating crops. That was somebody's livelihood. They were eating all those crayfish, which for them was an all-you-can-eat buffet, but unfortunately was destroying somebody's livelihood and taking food away from people. And so instead of being euthanized for that, those guys were actually live trapped and were sent here to the wild center so that they could continue to live a really long life, longer than they would have if they had stayed in the wild and have a free source of food that wasn't hurting anybody by them taking it. So those guys have a bit of an unusual story, but none of these guys are related, which is pretty cool. They all just happen to get along for the most part. As I mentioned, we do have a fifth otter squirt who doesn't get along with our other otters, but that's her choice and that's totally okay. We'll respect that choice. But 
they all look very similar and especially the two boys who came to us from Louisiana they act like they've been together their whole lives we actually were able to put them together within I believe a week or two of getting them which is pretty crazy often it takes a long time to introduce otters safely and so those guys are playing again we'll see if we can get the camera on them so a little bit of wrestling though of course they only want to wrestle right behind that log where it's hard for us to see hopefully they'll come this way so i'm gonna hang out for a few more minutes before my fingers get too chilly but if you guys do have any questions i'll do my best to answer them live if i miss any i'll come on back and i'll type out the answers in the comments later so I see that Linda is asking about the otter's tails. And so Louis right underneath me and we'll see if we can get a good look at his tail. So you can see that Louis's tail is really long. It's almost actually the length of his entire body. And it is pretty flat on top. So it's not round like a cat's tail or a dog's tail. Instead, it's pretty flat. And their tail acts a little bit like a rudder in the water. So when these guys are swimming, their tail acts like a rudder on a boat and helps them turn easily. So it's a really, really important part. It's not quite as flat as a beaver's and unlike a beaver's, it actually does have fur all over it. So we'll see if we can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, so you can see all that fur on Louis's tail and you can see how flat it is now. So their tail is a really, really important part of their swimming adaptations and their whole body is actually shaped kind of like a torpedo to help these guys move really efficiently through the water. They're very hydrodynamic, so they are going to be moving through the water pretty easily and then that tail just helps them move even more efficiently through it, which is pretty cool. Oh, and I see that Callie is asking if we can show the babies. So Callie, I would guess that you are asking about the two North American river otter pups, so babies, that we rehabilitated earlier this year. And unfortunately, I can't show you guys those babies because we actually released them into the wild. So I'll tell you guys the story really briefly before I log off. But if you want to... Uh, hear the whole thing and see the whole thing in more detail, check out wildcenter.org slash pupdate and you'll get a lot of information on what I'm talking about. But in May, we actually received two calls on the same weekend about North American river otters, North American river otter babies that were abandoned by their mothers. So they were both within a couple of hours of us, but at two very different locations, several hours apart. And so we knew that since we had our five resident North American river otters and we've cared for many more over the years, we knew that these guys, the two pups, would have their best chance of survival with us because we already had a good habitat for them. We had the experience to take care of them. We had a good food source that was already here and we had staff that really, really knew how to take care of otters and how to do it well. So we took those guys in and we raised them for many months. When we first got them, they were actually so young, they still needed to be bottle fed for a couple of months, but they rapidly outgrew the bottle. And after giving them lots of hunting practice with live fish, we actually released those otter pups back to the wild at a special reserve and they are doing well. We actually have trail cams in the area and we've gotten a few updates where we've caught pictures of them and they seem to be doing a great job. So the otters, the otter pups, I can't show you to them because they are living their best life in the wild, which is pretty awesome. But uh, thank you for bringing that up, Callie. It's awesome. I almost forget. It seems like so long ago, even though it was just a couple of months ago that we released them. But that took up a big portion of our year having those pups. And if, again, if anybody's interested, check out wildcenter.org slash pupdate to get a little more information. Now I'm going to answer one more question before I head out. I see that Carrie is asking if Louis fur is different colored on top from old age. So otters come in a couple different shades of brown. I like to say that Louis fur in general 
is like milk chocolate, but we do have some art otters whose fur is a little more like dark chocolate. So Louis' fur has always been a little bit lighter than some of our other otters. And you can hear Scarlet going and telling one of the boys what for, not too far away. So Louis' fur has always been a little bit lighter than some of our other otters. He has lightened his fur a little bit in old age. And then you can also see he has a couple of tufts right now that are on his rump. That's just as he gets older. Louis not spending quite as much time grooming, though he does love to show off as he's showing. Um, he doesn't spend quite as much time grooming and those tufts of fur are a little bit like if you've ever had a Labrador Retriever. Often when they're shedding, they'll get kind of, I call them pluckers. They're just little bits of fur of that undercoat as they come up and shed that you can just very easily pull out. Louie just doesn't quite think that it is worth the effort. But most otters are darker on top and then lighter on bottom. So we'll see if uh, Los Snole just joined us. We'll see if he moves so that you can see his belly a little bit. He's more of a dark chocolate otter. Like I said, his fur is a little bit darker, but his belly is still kind of a cream grayish white, which is pretty typical for most North American river otters. So you can see his chin is that color and uh, his tummy is as well. So, I think that is all the questions that I saw. Now, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining us on these lunchtime live programs still. It's really awesome that you guys have stuck around this long with us. We've been doing these programs since March and we're super glad to have you with us. So I hope you enjoyed getting kind of a really cool up close look at our otter play yard seeing them get those delicious snowballs and then learning a little bit about the otters that live here at the Wild Center. So until next time, stay safe and stay warm. Bye guys.